Hey guys, welcome to week one of MGF 2351 International Business. My name is Andy Kavanagh and I'll have the distinct pleasure of taking the videos and online content and for some of you, the workshops over the next 12 or so weeks. Now as you can see from our friends on the opening slide, it is international business time and over the next few slides and the next few videos, we're going to go through a bit of an introduction to the unit and also some of the first week's content. Alright, so as I say, let's first we'll introduce myself and also the unit more broadly. We'll run you through some of the details over the course of this week's videos before moving on to the formal lecture content itself, looking at key issues and introductory issues within this unit, such as what exactly do we mean? by international business? What does that constitute? Importantly, how is that different from domestic business? That will hopefully highlight uh, the value added by this particular unit relative to some of the other business units that you may be undertaking in your time here at Monash. And finally, we'll look at a key topic of globalization, something you've probably heard a lot about, uh, but hopefully we will give you a better understanding of exactly what that means and entails in our videos today. But first, and in the words of Austin Powers, allow me to introduce myself. Yes, this unit, MGF2351, is being run by this guy. If you haven't worked it out yet, that little guy grew up to be him. That is me, Andy Kavanagh, as I say. I am based here at the Caulfield campus, up in level 7 of Building N, up on the Penthouse Suite. My phone number, as you can see there, 9903-2608. I do recommend, though, that if you do want to get in contact with me, the email is probably the best form of contact there. I can guarantee that I'll always have regular access to my emails, but I won't always be waiting by the phone for your call. So, especially... If you're looking to book an, a consultation time, which as you can see is by appointment, I always recommend shooting me an email and we can set up a time that works for the both of us. As a general rule, if you do have any questions within this unit, I always uh, recommend to students that you ask your workshop facilitator first and then if only if they are not able to give you a suitable answer, then get in touch with me as your chief examiner or lecturer after that, and I will hopefully be able to answer any queries that you may have. Now, before we move on to more important things, just a bit of background about me to reassure you that the person running this unit isn't completely out of their depth, and then hopefully also show you that you too uh, sitting here undertaking this unit may one day end up in a position just like me because as you can see like a lot of you I actually completed my undergraduate studies here at Monash. I did a double degree of management and marketing before moving on to an honours degree of management uh, and specialising in international business and then went on to do my PhD here again at Monash uh, specialising in that area of IB. This has led to the point now where I research in these specialised areas. They tend to be the focus of my research studies. Uh, as you can see, things like international business broadly, but especially multinational enterprise strategy and subsidiary development evolution and headquarters with their uh, relationships, rather, with their headquarters. In terms of personal interests, there are a few that I'll mention, and I will apologise in advance for the countless references that will be made throughout the remainder of the semester and especially in these videos in relation to these three things. First of all, I love cars. That is my pride and joy, a 1966 Mustang GT. If you see her around, be gentle. She's old and fragile, but I do love her and most other cars. I am a tragic St Kilda supporter, unfortunately. Yes, I am somewhat a bit of a masochist, but I love the club and especially my all-time favourite player, Lenny Hayes. And I'm also in a the greatest band that you've never ever heard of. Yes, that is me and my band Vesper Lynn. One day you will say that you actually had Andy Kavanagh before he was the greatest drummer of all time, just when he was a lecturer at Monash. Let's move on to the more important things now, though, and in particular, the learning outcomes associated with this uh, this unit. Firstly, you can see here, these are things that we're hoping you will be able to demonstrate 
from by the time you have completed this unit. And that will involve obviously classifying the key features and issues in the global environment in which international business does take place. Secondly, explaining the impact that the environment has on that internationalization process when a firm expands overseas. And thirdly, demonstrating an understanding of the role of entry mode choice as well as other strategic issues in order for that firm to be able to succeed in their business conducted on an international scale. So they're the broad objectives that we're looking for you guys to be able to demonstrate by the end of this semester. Now, some of you may still be sitting here going, I'm not really sure how useful or interesting this unit may be. And that is completely fair enough, especially if management is not your major or focus. But I can reassure you that at least some parts of what you'll learn over the next 12 weeks will hopefully be of interest to you. This is especially the case if you like to either travel overseas or purchase things online or potentially even one day hope to work for a large multinational company. If any of that interested you, then I can guarantee that at the very least this unit will be relevant to you even if you don't quite get to Tyra Banks levels of excitement about the content. And I say that because in this unit we look at not only the international activities of the firms themselves but also what that means for people like you guys who will one day or are currently working for them. So this means that especially once you guys leave uni and you're going out and getting those jobs you guys are going to be especially valuable and knowledgeable assets for those potential employers, especially co uh, companies and firms which do have some form of international operations, which as we'll discuss over the next few weeks, includes pretty much every company today. The cases that we look at in this unit are also very much based around interesting companies that you'll be encountering in your everyday life, whether it's in a news program, in the newspaper, or your feed on Facebook, a lot of the firms and cases that we look at over the next 12 weeks are very much things you will be dealing with in your day-to-day -day life. Now in terms of the unit format, this unit is structured quite differently to a number of the other units that you have likely to have encountered here at Monash. The main reason is because we don't actually have face-to-face -face lectures. Instead, we have online content. So you don't have to come to uni and listen to the Dean Pritchards of, from old school of the world lecturing you about something that you're not really interested in at a time that doesn't suit you because allocate was a pain in the you-know-what. Instead, we upload a series of videos every week uh, relating to that particular week's topic uh, and each of these videos and the corresponding slides will be made available to you via the Moodle site by no later than the Friday before the corresponding week. So that means that for example the week two videos and slides will be put up by the Friday of week one at the very latest. As well as the videos and slides, there are also additional resources like quizzes and readings relevant to each week's topic that will be made available under each of those week's tabs on the Moodle site. So all of the content uh, that we uh, deliver in this unit will be made available to you on the Moodle site, so having access to that is crucial. And as well as the online content, we also offer workshops. We'll talk about this in a bit more detail on the following slide. But being able to attend your workshops, in which are the face-to-face -face, uh, learning components of this unit, is an absolute must if you want to pass the unit. Every single semester we have people who do not pass the unit and uh, there is a clear correlation between those who do not regularly attend their classes, their workshops, and those who do not pass the unit. So really, it's up to you guys how much effort you want to put in uh, as in terms of how well you would like to do in this unit. I can also tell you that assignment hints are absolutely given in your workshop. So while keeping up to date with the online content is vital, so too is being able to make sure that you can attend those two hours of face-to-face -face classes every week. Now, unfortunately, I can't guarantee that your workshops will have Channing Tatum in them, but they do, as you can see here, commence in week one. So unlike some units which don't start till week two, you do need to be attending class from week one. There's a real emphasis here on active learning. What that means is that the learning which is uh, 
which actually happens and occurs in the classes isn't just something which is driven by either myself or one of the other workshop facilitators. It's also driven by you guys. You guys are the ones who direct uh, and to a large extent uh, actually drive a lot of the learning that is occurring in these classes. It occurs mainly through things like discussion questions, case studies, the analysis of newspaper articles and online resources, things that will require you to actually interact with other people in the workshop. So it's not going to be the sort of thing where you can just sit there and hope to absorb things. You're going to actually have to participate. Uh, you are expected to attend the workshops and also need to be preparing every week by reviewing that Moodle content that we spoke about on the previous slide. Failure to do this, as I said before, has shown to have a significantly negative impact on your ability to actually pass the unit. There are also some assessments, which we'll talk about in the next video, that are held in your workshops. So again, if you're not going to those workshops, not only are you missing out on uh, the learning that occurs there, but you're denying yourself the ability to actually complete all of the assessments as well. So please, uh, as best you can of course, try and make sure you're attending all of those workshops. In the next video we're going to go through some of the unit resources and the all-important assessment items.